بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم Your Eminences, the religious leaders here present Your Excellencies, the ambassadors Your Excellency, the US Ambassador to Uganda the Algerian Ambassador to Uganda, the Libyan Ambassador to Uganda, and all members of the Diplomatico, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Praise be to the Almighty Allah, who has helped us and enabled us to be here today as we put on permanent record the history of Islam in Uganda. Like you've heard from the previous speakers, Islam came to Uganda in 1844 or thereabout, and it was purely by accident that Islam found its way in Uganda by the Arab traders who are here purely for commerce and trade. The book we are, trying, we are launching today shows the challenges what Islam went through to make an impact in this country. Among the challenges it faced was lack of a formal structure. We didn't have missionaries to spread and propagate Islam in Uganda. Secondly, we didn't have benefactors to lean on as Islam found its way among the people of Uganda. Three, Islam was introduced from mainly two sources. One from the Swahili traders from the coast, and also on the northern frontier by the Sudanese soldiers who were here on the instruction of the colonial masters. The other challenge we found, or we had, we didn't have schools. And that caused a lot of contradictions in the Muslim community at that time, up to about 50 years ago. There were many at that time who thought that they should not go to secular education for fear of their loved ones converting to Christianity because all the institutions were managed by Christian missionaries. They believed that the children or their loved ones should go to the Quran schools. There was that contradiction of which others thought that there was no shortcut. We have to embrace Western education, come rain or shine. Fortunately, a hundred years ago or thereabout, we overcame these contradictions and agreed that we need both centers of learning to have a competitive Muslim who will fear his God, but also be good to his community. The other challenge we've gone through are the power struggles in the Muslim community. And I believe they have been well captured in this document. We believe that whatever I've gone through, now we've come of age. I want to say that all have been captured very well in this book, and we've managed to put up institutions of our own, of our own both secular and religious. I don't know if you've given credit to those individuals who helped us to put up these institutions, but I know to that position that you've really highlighted the individuals who helped a lot to propagate Islam in Uganda. And all these individuals in the book, I think each in his own right, needs to have a book in his honor and the right in depth of what his contribution was. I would like to thank the government that helped us to put up our own education institutions. The government of Uganda, 
And I also want to thank the American people through Your Excellency, the Ambassador, and you said we got assistance to put up many of our institutions that is in Chibuli, Nabisosa, and other institutions. I wish also to thank the Libyan government. They have helped us also to put up institutions as well as the Saudi Arabian government. We want to thank all those who have nurtured this community. It had a lot of challenges. But as we launch this book, all those are now in the past. We should not live in the past, but learn from the past to build a strong and self-sustaining community for the good of all the Muslims and for the good of all Ugandans and all humanity as a whole. As we talk stock of what we've gone through, all the challenges, what is the way forward for the Ummah? We can't keep crying. We can't keep lamenting. What I would suggest, that all the challenges not withstanding, we should focus on uniting on what brings us together, as opposed to focusing on what brings disunity in the community. We should learn as a community or as a woman to tolerate divergent views. Intolerance is a problem and it has no place in society. We should be able to hear one another, let everybody have his view, and we move as a community and as owner. We should shun evil in public and also in private, because a modern society cannot tolerate evil acts or evil thoughts. Many people in the Ummah have always complained about marginalization. I'm of a different view. I think we've come of age. We should build capacity and we compete. Whatever is there, it is a very competitive world. By building capacity, I'm not inviting my good friends in security to get concerned about what capacity building is, but I'm saying let's build capacity in the form of education, business, name it, even politics. Because without that, we shall always keep lamenting with no reform. I would also like to ask the Muslim Ummah to get out from the donor mentality because it has also put us behind, thinking that there is somebody who is coming here to help us live our lives. I think we have enough resources. We should utilize them and build our institutions. Case in point, we've been used to getting donors to help us put up messages and schools. I'd like to thank all those who have been able, in their own right, to set up these centers of learning, the messages, and everything which is always going to be good for all of us. I would like, lastly, to thank Uma Connected for connecting the Uma and put on permanent record the challenges the Ummah has gone through, and also to give us a effort. I would like to thank the authors and whoever has been behind this publication for a job well done. I have not had time to go through everything that is on record, but I believe you have done justice. And I would like to invite students of history, so, uh, students in the primary, post-primary and tertiary institutions, or to go through this book, and also to invite general readers who would also like to learn where Islam has gone through, so that they should do appreciate what we've gone through. It has been a long journey, but I think we've come home, and I think we should put up a good base for the next generation. I'd also like to ask others to put on record what they know about Islam. There's a lot to be put on record. We cannot say that Islam is in all these three volumes. There is a lot that can still be put on permanent record. Please read this book, read all other correspondences, and also come up with something 
that the Ummah will always be proud about. I would like to take this opportunity, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, to formally launch this book, The History of Islam in Uganda, which I wish to recommend to all brothers and sisters, globally, locally, and everywhere, to go through it and appreciate the contributions and everything about Islam. Lastly, I remember 30 years ago, when I was graduating from high school in San Diego, California, the commencement speaker told us, as young men then, that graduates, as you go into this world, remember one thing, that whenever you're called upon to speak, stand up, speak up, and shut up. I intend to do exactly that. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Eno, yes, Salam TV.